Welcome, this is item number 27 from the newly released Spring 2014 Test Items for 7th grade TCAP Math. The question says, which table of values best represents a directly proportional relationship? Now, oftentimes when you see these types of questions, they'll make you go and find the differences and then see if you divide the difference here by the difference here and it matches up and they're all the same you would pick that as the correct answer which would be true if we were finding a linear relationship we're not trying to find a linear relationship we're finding a directly proportional one uh, from previous videos you should have at least be aware of the idea of a proportion by now so a proportion is where I have two ratios or fractions that will end up being equal to each other so one times two gives me two two times two gives me four the overall value of it is the same thing. Basically you'll have one fraction that reduces to the other. That type of thing. Um, but the real bonus feature of a proportion is that uh, a numerator and the uh, opposing denominator multiplied together is the same as the vice versa version. So 4 times 1 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, so if it's a proportion it works out. We can use that to our advantage. For instance, in this case, we would have to make a fraction where it's negative 1 over negative 2 and then 0 over negative 1 to see if we can make a comparison. So we end up doing negative 1 times negative 1, which gives me 1. Negative 2 times 0 is equal to 0. See, these are not a proportion. And the nice thing is, once you get the idea that that works, all you have to do is multiply these times these and see if it gives you the same answer. If it does for all the terms, then you know it's a direct proportion. That's it. So for this one, 3 times 1 is 3, 6 times 2 is 12. Yeah, no, it's not a direct proportion. Um, for Also, it helps if they're not doing different things. This one tends to be going down, this one tends to be going up. Um, it's not the only thing you should look for, but it's a good hint. It's probably not going to work. This one, uh, you're going up and going up, so let's test this one. Um, 0 times negative 8 is nothing. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. So no, it's not directly proportional. The last one, however, may very well work. So if I do negative 2 times negative 2, I get 4. Negative 4 times negative 1 gives me 4 as well. So that's looking pretty good. So let's do the next set. 0 times negative 1 is 0. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. So that's looking good. And then finally, let me just erase these really quickly. 0 times negative 2 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, so yeah. So just check with cross multiplying uh, and take a look. If it gives you the same answer for each set, not necessarily the same between each one, just that they're proportions, just that uh, 4 equals 4, 0 equals 0. So take the number here, multiply, number here, multiply, and compare them. If it gives you the same thing on both sides, it's a proportion. But you will need to check it with more than one because it's possible that it'll work out in certain situations but fail in other situations. So just run through and check them all. If you have a calculator, it's really fast. Or a basic math knowledge will get you to these really quickly. I didn't have to use a calculator to do 2 times 2. Just make sure that you get your, if it's two negatives, it's positive when you're multiplying. If you have one negative and one positive, of, you know, going to end up being negative. So make sure your signs work out to prove that it's directly proportional. And that's it. Shouldn't take very long. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. But anytime it asks you to develop a direct proportional relationship, just create little proportions and see if they're true or not. Because if they're not, they're not proportions and thus not directly proportional. So that's it.